three, two, one. Ready? Action. Welcome on into Talking Max, and I am your host, Dominic Clary. We just finished an exciting week two of Mac football. I want to talk about that with you guys. Uh, you know, go over this past week where we had some almost upsets, some disappointments uh, from some of our uh, Mac teams, and uh, one really big upset, one that hopefully um, Mac fans will remember forever. So that was a lot of fun. We'll make sure to cover that. Also, um, with Keon Sports writing coverage, we have some really exciting news. These are going to be the most games we ever have written coverage for. So I will be at Buffalo as they take on UMass. And as we will have that, we will have some other games for you as well. Uh, we will have uh, Miami's game against Cincinnati covered as well. That uh, rivalry game there at Oxford, that will be covered. Buffalo and UMass, like I once said, we will not have a writer at Miami. Uh, Florida, but we will have written coverage of Ball State against Miami uh, by our intern. Uh, we will have Ohio versus Morgan State coverage. We hope to have that for you all year, and we will hopefully, um, the plan is to have Akron versus Colgate. We should, so we expect that as well. Um, an exciting, exciting week for us, um, especially with Keon Sports, who I write for, and a lot of this coverage. Uh, written coverage goes to them. So make sure to check them out at keonsports.com, uh, K E E O N sports.com. Uh, uh, and you can find written coverage. You can also find stuff on our YouTube page where you can also find uh, this podcast right now. So if you're listening to the audio version, uh, you want to see what I look like, you want to see my uh, video or what my background looks like. Um, go ahead and click on, um, or go just search up the, the YouTube and it'll pop right up. Uh, so we do have an exciting episode. We'll go over some of the, the games that happened just a week ago and, uh, we'll do a preview as well. And also just some of my thoughts on some of the games I was able to pay a lot of attention to. Again, a lot of these games, you know, I'm at these games, not able to watch every single one of them. Uh, so I, I do my best to, to watch recaps, read things about these games. And uh, really um, examine the, the the score score bugs and, and and you know kind of try to figure out what exactly happened in these games and what was truly the difference maker. I uh, week two, I mean, really there was just a divide on on how some of these math teams did. There was really no parity across the conference on on how teams were doing. I mean, you had NIU who beat Notre Dame in Bowling Green that competed with Penn State, so you had two MAC teams that beat two top 10 teams. Then you had Western Michigan. They didn't score a single point against Ohio State. Um, Buffalo struggled against number nine, Missouri. I mean, you expect that. But again, there, there's almost no parity on, on how this works sometimes. It truly is ram, uh, randomized. And it's really hard to tell with these games of who is going to win and if they're going to compete. I mean, I thought Western Michigan would at least put up a point on the board. Not able to do so. Um, they just had so many issues. And again, when you go against Ohio State, that's what will happen. And again, this was kind of the, if you're watching all the MAC games, this is the one game where you're kind of like, all right, maybe not the game you want to end on because it's kind of, it's kind of it's a tough watch. You know, Akron competed with Ohio State for a half. Western Michigan not able to do that. They're down 21 right away. They gave up 14 points in the second, the third, in the fourth quarter. They gave up another seven, really, to put a, uh, Put a cherry on top of this blowout. Western Michigan really struggled against the number two team in the country. There's just too much talent in Ohio State. Uh, if you're 
if if you're Western Michigan, there's really not much you can do uh, when it comes to competing with an Ohio State. I, again, Akron may have done it, but that's just usually not the case. Um, and they only did it for a half. So, again, Western Michigan, better days will come. We will preview their next week's game. But just a, a tough week for the Broncos. Uh, hopefully, going forward for them, uh, they'll improve. But it's really hard to to have a measuring stick of how good this team is or how bad this team may be uh, off of playing a game at Camp Randall and playing a game at the Horseshoe at Ohio State. Just really hard to measure the success of these teams when they when they do that. But it is easy, easy to measure the success when NIU welcomes number five Notre Dame to the Boneyard. Uh, NIU, they've been in the they've been in the headlines all week since they beat Notre Dame. Um, you know, Coach Hammock, he's obviously been in the headlines for the you know the just the job he's done. Uh, again, Hampton had the TD for his team. Uh, he threw it to uh, to Brown. <coughs> Excuse me. They threw it to Brown, who who led them in rushing and receiving. He had 123, 126 yards, pardon me, in receptions, and uh, he had 99 yards in rushing. So great performance there from Brown, uh, Interior Brown, as you expect. But sh- shout out to NIU. They put up a quick 10. They have a a, 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 a three point lead against Notre Dame. And pardon me, is the dog is going wild in the background. Uh, she must see a deer back there. I apologize for that. Uh, Notre Dame, uh, just a true struggling against against NIU. Sorry, sorry about that interruption. Where I had to figure out what the dog was barking at there for a moment, or she just wasn't going to stop. So again. NIU, they get up to a three-point lead in, in the first quarter, and they maintain that. Notre Dame scores another touchdown, but two field goals for NIU, especially one at the very end and a block field goal uh, for NIU, makes them 2-0. and oh. It's just you have to be impressed what they're doing so far. Uh, next week, I'm interested to see what they what they do uh, with the challenge that they will have. Actually, I believe they have a well-deserved bye next week. Yeah, so... They actually have next week off, so we won't be talking about them further. But, you know, shout out to NIU, what they were able to do. Not often do we have a MAC team beating a top five team in their own house. So anytime that we get to see that happen, uh, whether doesn't matter what MAC school it is, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to see that. And another almost upset, uh, Bowling Green, they were up 24-21 at half. They led the entire half. Uh, they give up their lead in the third quarter. They give up another touchdown in the fourth. They're only able to to get a field goal. They lose thirty four to twenty seven. They only lose by a touchdown. What a great effort though by by Bowling Green. There were moments where you thought, "Wow, they could really win this game." And the the rushing was really the difference. Uh, Singleton had one hundred nineteen yards and a touchdown. Excuse me. They could not stop him. But Basilek he had two interceptions at the end of the game. They were forcing the ball down the field. Can't blame the kid for that. But 254 yards, two touchdowns, just a good performance uh, by by this leader, by by the by the senior. He outplayed Drew Allar, and with a rushing attack that wasn't the same rushing attack that it's that you'd think it would be with Stewart. And you know, Fannin Jr. He had 11 receptions, 137 yards, one TD. Uh, they weren't able to really give him the ball in the second half. And it, it, it showed on the scoreboard. When you can't give your best player the ball, especially when it's Fannin Jr., you're not going to win games, uh, and especially when it's number eight team in the country. And they're going to win games. They're going to win a lot of games. And when you see my power ranking after this, go on keonsports.com to read, uh, read about it. It'll be all over Twitter and uh, Facebook and, and threads, so you'll be able to see them there. But w- they were very close uh, of beating Penn State. They struggled there in the third and fourth quarter, only only a, 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 a field goal to show for it at the very end. But I tell you what, that's a, that's a tough place to play. They had to call a timeout at one point because it was just too loud in that building. Uh, you know, Happy Valley is one of the loudest places in, in, in college football. And they struggled in the, in the second half. Mo Bumbo plays, and you can't hear, you can't hear your own thoughts. Uh, we'll move on to Missouri and Buffalo. Missouri, they blow out Buffalo. Missouri's really good team this year uh, they showed it last year too i believe they were around the top 10 finish so 
again, Missouri, really good team. Buffalo, not much you can do. I'm not really going to to hang on this for too long. They're one one They have an opportunity to go to 2-1 and against UMass uh, just uh, a few days from now. So I'm interested to see the effort they put forth against UMass and if they can beat them. And we'll talk about UMass, actually, what they play a lot of MAC opponents this year. Uh, Akron, they down. 21 to 3 at half. They can't put a touchdown until the second half. They end up losing 49 to 17. Rutgers scores 14 points in three frames, the final three frames of play. Um, Akron, they were down 7 0 in the first quarter. They just could not put up a touchdown. Rutgers, they have a good squad. Um, I don't know how they're going to do in Big Ten play. Frankly, it doesn't matter. Akron, like to see them do a little bit more here. But again, it's hard to judge a team when they're going against a Power 5 team or Power 4 team, pardon me, and especially when it's a Big Ten team and, and a team that is looking to not just go bowling but have a pretty good record. That's what Rutgers expects to be this year. Ball State, they uh, good offensive display, uh, especially in the fourth quarter. Boy, that defense, they struggled desperately. Uh, and, and there's a written article uh, on our website, so make sure to check that out. You'll get a full recap on Ball State all year long so really excited um for coverage you know and again we have previews already so like there, there's you can go on and, and look at the recap of of ohio university versus south uh alabama so you can recap that we're going to talk about that in a little bit we have an article on ohio state against western uh michigan um we have a few articles actually on that uh you know our very own connor sandy did a really good job uh, he watched both games. That, that young man's impressive. He'll be at Ohio this week, deservingly. So uh, Danny Davidson, he'll be at Miami, and um, he'll be covering that game. He's really excited for that, really excited for that young man. Uh, another person I want to mention, uh, Nick Shelton. He's our Ball State writer. Uh, he, just a great writer out there at Ball State for us. They're um, – there in um in Muncie. So we're excited what they're doing there. He has a written recap. You can find that all on the website, keonsports.com. Now you can read about the ball state win uh in 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 what they did there. They 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 were down seven nothing early. They scored two touchdowns in the second and the third, but Missouri scores another touchdown as well. It's all tied up and they give up 20 points, 20 points in in the fourth quarter. This this Ball State team, there, there's something to worry about here. They have a lot of growing pains going forward. So, again, you're 1-0. Congratulations to that. But we'll see what you got next week when you go on to Miami, Florida, to take on one of the best teams in the country. you you got to be a little nervous if, if you're a Ball State fan going forward. Uh, but next week, uh, it's going to be a scary sight uh, if you're ball, a Ball State fan because Miami, the Miami Hurricanes, they're the real deal this year. Uh, this is not a team where we can say, oh, it's just Miami. They stay. This isn't the normal Miami Hurricanes, the Miami, Florida of old. No, th- this is the team. This is going to be a team that's going to be as close as you're going to get to this early 2000s and 90s, 80s, 70s teams. Uh, St. Francis, PA walked into Dick Stadium and. They beat Kent State. Uh, not going to harp on this for long. It's an embarrassing game. You don't have a single leader in pass rush and reception when you compare them to St. Francis. St. Francis' first F- FBS win, congratulations to them. But, Kent, what are we doing? I, you can't lose it. You can't go in the pit, only be down by a touchdown in the second half, and then you lose to an FCS opponent. It can't happen. It can't happen. It's just a matter of fact, it cannot happen. You cannot lose games like this. And if if you're if you're at coaching staff, you gotta take a hard look on what you have and if it's enough, because they might have to hit that transfer portal hard. And they have talent on the squad. They just have to find a way to unlock it. And I know Coach Burns not happy about his team's performance and they most likely gonna start 0 4 as they take on Tennessee and Penn State at their places. Tough way to start the season. This was supposed to be your one win, and you dropped it. Uh, they're going to really have to hope that they can snag a game or two, or we could very well see a winless season from Kent. And I don't think anyone wants to see that in the MAC. 
Eastern Michigan, they travel to Washington. They lead for a quarter, but not much longer after that, Washington takes the lead over Eastern Michigan. Uh, they score 21 points in the second quarter. Uh, not a single touchdown for Eastern Michigan. Three field goals. Uh, that equals up to nine. And then uh, Washington, they kind of just ran off of that strong second quarter. They scored nine in the third. That was pretty much it for them. Uh, Toledo, they had a nice little battle against uh, UMass. They take an early lead. They get outscored by UMass in the second quarter. They outscore uh, UMass in the third, seven to three in the third, and then 14 to seven. So they get the advantage in the final half uh, of play. Uh, thanks to uh, Jaquez Stewart, uh, 98 yard kick return. Uh, he is a factor. And I'll tell you what, this UMass quarterback, he had a good game 259 yards, one touchdown, one interception. He had 22 carries on the ground with 44 yards and a touchdown on the ground. So he was the leader in the game for rushing and passing. Really interested to see him this week in, in what type of exciting player that he is. Uh, Central Michigan went down the uh, Pitbull Stadium at uh, Florida Inter uh, at FIU. I'm not gonna call it Florida International at FIU. Uh, yeah, is it updated? Does it say? Does it say Pitbull Stadium? I I can't tell you. Yeah, Pitbull Stadium. I can't tell you how funny that is that they named their stadium after Pitbull. That's just so insane. And it's so funny. If, if FIU controlled the whole game. Go up to an early lead, score 21 points in the second quarter, seven in the first. Uh, East Central Michigan, they only walk away with eight points in the second quarter and then eight points in the third. They only have 16 the entire game. They cannot slow down FIU. Not the performance you wanted if you're the Chippewas. Uh, they are one-on-one -on -one so far. Uh, they need Emmanuel's Jr. back quickly. Ohio, we have a written recap there by our own, very own Connor Sandy. Uh, he wrote about the 27 to 20 win against uh South Alabama. It's a good win South Alabama is a decent team uh in in the group of 5 or group of 6 whatever it is now. And just getting a win where you can get it after a tough loss to Syracuse just a uh just a good overall W for for Ohio and what they were able to do. Um a few years ago we saw them uh struggle against South Alabama and they almost won the match. So we'll uh we'll keep a close eye on, on South Alabama and, and see if there's any um if that kind of gives us a sneak peek on how good uh Ohio is. Uh Central Michigan they'll travel to Illinois. Uh Illinois, I believe they had a big win this past weekend. Uh yeah, they beat Kansas, number nineteen Kansas, twenty three to seventeen. So big win for them. They're two and oh. I think Central Michigan can keep can cover. Uh, it's at forty eight point five, but Illinois they will end up blowing them out. It'll be right around, uh, or it's eighteen and a half. Pardon me, the total is fifty eight and a half. Uh, eighteen and a half. I, I think Illinois will cover. I don't think Central Michigan uh, uh, competes. I, I think that last week's going to linger a little bit. Miami they host Cincinnati. The line is in favor of Cincinnati at four. Cincinnati came off a really tough loss uh, against Pitt just a week ago. I think they lose both both rivalry games. Uh, I think Miami beats them at home and kind of shows that, hey, no wonder why you're not playing us. Then uh, Again, you're scared of us. You might think you're better than us because you're a power four opponent now. No, we're the better team. I think Miami wins this game. Uh, Buffalo will take on UMass, 0-2 UMass. Uh, they do have a really good quarterback, so we'll see how that goes. Barksdale uh, is the big-time running back for uh, Buffalo. But I am excited to see how the carries go. So, again, this is – I'm actually really excited for this game. Never been to Buffalo before. I've uh, driven through the city of Buffalo, but never been to the university. Excited to see that stadium. Um, kind of wish they would get rid of the track, but I'm, I'm sure that stadium is really nice. I'm sure it's a great atmosphere there in Buffalo. So really excited to go there and uh, see what, uh, what the university at Buffalo has to offer. Uh, but I have Buffalo winning this game, uh, and, and I have them cover. I have them winning by more than three and a half uh, that they've been given by uh, that ESPN. And that's, this is what these odds are from. Uh, Miami uh, of Florida, they are hosting Ball State, number 10 team in the country against Ball State. That's on ACC Network. Uh, 36 and a half in favor of Miami. I think Miami covers. And they blow out Ball State at Miami Gardens. Uh, Ohio take, takes on Morgan State. No line for the for some of these games here. I think Ohio 
beats Morgan State and gets a win. Akron will face Colgate. I think they get their first one on the season. Colgate's 0-2. They're struggling so far. Usually Colgate has a def- decent team, but so far, uh, not this year. This game will be at Akron. We'll also have written coverage by Brandon Marvel, who re- wrote a preview, so make sure to read that so you're well prepared for this game when it's on ESPN Plus at 6 o'clock. Western Michigan takes on Bethune-Cookman. Uh, no um, no spread for that one yet. Western Michigan is going to blow out Bethune-Cookman. Uh, whatever the, uh, the, the spread is, I take it in favor of Western Michigan. I think that they're going to close that game out pretty easily, uh, and I think that they'll have a good attack against uh, Bethune-Cookman. Eastern Michigan, they take on Jacksonville State. Jacksonville State's going to beat uh, Eastern Michigan at Ypsilanti. Uh, it's in favor of Eastern Michigan. Uh, but I just have a feeling that Eastern Michigan, they're going to struggle. Uh, this is a game that they should win, but I don't think they're going to. I'm going to take Jackson State here for this one. Mississippi State against Toledo. Uh, the spread's only 10.5. Upset alert. Upset alert. I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling that this Toledo team is going to go to Mississippi State. They're going to hear the cowbells, and they're going to ignore it. I think Toledo's going to cover. Do I pick them to win? Do I pick? Do I pick Toledo to win? Why not? Two and go to three and zero. Move on the top of our power, my power rankings. They still might. They might be on top of my power rankings. Make sure to go cansports dot com to read to see where they are. Yeah, Toledo's going to win this game. They're not just going to cover, but they're going to win this game. Uh, this game is in Mississippi State. The Rockets, they're going to launch off and win this one. Tennessee takes on the struggling uh, Kent State Golden Flashes. Uh, this is in Knoxville. Uh, you go to a Rocky Top and you're a group, five, a group of six team. It's not an easy game to win. So 49 uh, is the spread in favor of Tennessee. Tennessee's going to cover. They're going to blow out uh, Kent State. Uh, again, Kent State used to put good efforts up, but just right now the talent, not where it needs to be quite yet. So hopefully that they can get back in that spot where they can at least scare some of these uh, these good teams, but they're not there yet. Uh, we'll see if they can put some points on the board. I'd, I'd really like to see that. I just don't know if... I just don't know if that's the case. I just, I don't know. I don't know if Kent State is just at the point yet where they're going to be able to compete at all with Tennessee for any moment in time. I don't. I don't. You know, then they play Penn State next week. Oh, and then we have we have some of our first conference games. Uh, and then week four, we'll, I will be at Miami covering Miami versus Notre Dame. NIE will take on Buffalo. Uh, these are two weeks from now. So we do have some MAC play. Toledo takes on Western Kentucky, which could be future MAC play. And that's going to be it for them, uh, for, for the MAC team. Still some buys that week. Again, this is an interesting slate. I, I think that we're going to see some more MAC wins than we saw uh, last week. And and that's just, I think that's just the reality of the situation. I just think last week was kind of just give or take on what you're going to get. Uh, we'll see what happens this week. I'm really excited about it, especially about traveling to Buffalo. I'm I'm hoping that there's some good wing spots. I'm hoping there's some good wing spots in Buffalo. I'm hoping to find out about some of the good wing spots in Buffalo and being able to travel to them, uh, bring bring some wings home to the girlfriend, and and we'll. Uh, yeah, so if if you're a native from Buffalo or if you've been to Buffalo, put in the comments of, of where should I go that's near the stadium. If you have somewhere that's kind of like a little outside outside of where the, the university is, it's a ten minute drive, I'll make the detour for it, but I'm not I'm not driving all over Buffalo to find wings. I'll drive a little bit. I'm not driving all over the darn city to find some wings to, to order takeout and go home. So Really excited about that. Really excited about all the coverage that we're going to have. We're going to have boots in the ground in Miami and Ohio and, and Akron. And we're going to have a, a writer covering Ball State, who usually is boots in the ground at Ball State. But this game on the road to Florida, not able to to fly out interns. Um, 
yeah, not able to fly out interns, uh, obviously. So, so we're really excited about the coverage that we have going forward. Uh, it's only going to get better. We're going to have some weeks where Vince McKee might help out or others might, might help. Um, Brandon Marvel is not an intern. He's one of our great writers. If you're watching this, is most likely be on Friday, unless you're watching in the wee hours of, of Thursday night. But if it's Friday, search up Brandon Marvel on our website. Read some of our articles. Find him on Twitter. This kid is great. He's a good announcer. He's a good writer. He has a really bright future ahead of him. So really excited to see where he goes in giving him some of, I believe, the first college games he's covered football-wise. So excited to send him out to Akron, and we'll probably send him there um, a little bit more. Uh, that will be it. A little bit of a shorter episode. Uh, not a lot of games for week three. Uh, and we kind of went through week two fairly quickly. Um, one thing I will say is I do want to talk about Bowling Green. And here's the rev- You know what? Here's the here's my reveal on on. I'll give you my number three and four on my power rankings, and, and I'm not going to tell you which is three, which is four. I'll let you guess. Bowling Green and Miami. Bowling Green two and zero. Oh. Miami zero oh one. They did not play last week. I want you to. I want you to think why why those two teams are in those spots. Bowling Green, they're one and one. I think I said they're two and up. They're not two and up. They're one and one. Bowling Green, great effort against Penn State. Probably should have won that game. And then you have Miami, who I do think has a really good roster. They had a bye week and they played Northwestern in the new stadium. Uh, there was nice weather when they played there, but I can't imagine the wind uh, is is kind of chilled and relaxed uh, in the windy city right on the lake. So. I'm kind of giving them pass. I'm interested to see what happens this week. If they lose these next two weeks, it's going to be hard to punish them, but you can't reward them. So they're either the third or the fourth team, and uh, you can guess who the first two are. But Bowling Green, are they three or four? Do I punish them for losing? Do I reward them for staying in it? Uh, find out on the website. I plugged in enough. You can go back to see what our website is, gnsports.com. Really excited for the coverage that we have uh, going forward. And, and make sure to read the power rankings that comes out here in a little bit. If you're listening to it, it's already out. Uh, but I'm about to post it now. So thank you for joining on Talking Maction. I'm Don McClary. Uh, make sure to watch on the YouTube page. Or you can go on Spotify. But make sure to subscribe to the YouTube page. And to uh, subscribe to on Spotify or wherever you get your a podcast from Bernard on Apple Music. I'm having a lot of issues with it. Just will not upload on on Apple Podcasts. I don't know why. Um, I've done everything I'm supposed to do for that. They're the only place on literally everything else I'm able to put them on except that. So hopefully going forward that we'll have that. Thank you for watching. We'll have another episode next week, hopefully earlier in the week going forward. Not on Thursdays, but hopefully Mondays. Get you content a little bit earlier as well with the power rankings. Thank you for watching. We'll have more. And remember, go on our website, read the articles. We have written recaps. Uh, and I'll be giving updates on my Twitter, at Dominic Clary at Twitter. Uh, live recaps or live, um, live updates in the game. So make sure to follow me there as well. We'll see you next week on the same bat time, same bat channel.